From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to unveil the path on how to successfully navigate the modern buyer's journey. Joining us is Jake Randall, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Common Room, which enables community developer relationships and go-to-market leaders to drive brand awareness, product option, and revenue by engaging with users across all stages of the modern customer journey. Yesterday, Jake and I talked about navigating the influencer-led B2B buyer's journey, and today we're going to wrap up our conversation talking about understanding community-led growth. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Jake Randall, the Chief Operating Officer at Common Room. Jake, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for having me back. Excited to have you back. Excited to continue our conversation. Yesterday, we covered guitars, Patriots football. We made fun of Doug Bell. And we talked a little bit about how influencer marketing is actually the 800-pound gorilla in the B2B SaaS room these days, where if you can't meet your customers where they are and get in front of the people that matter, you're really in trouble because people aren't opening your canned emails and they're not responding on LinkedIn like they used to. So there's one other component of the modern buyer's journey that I wanted to tap into. You can work with influencers and get them to talk positively about your brand, probably paying them. Or you can try to get your customers or your brand involved in some sort of a community where you can interject yourself into the conversation. Talk about how you can understand community-led growth. I think the first place to start maybe is how do you define community? And I think for a lot of folks, honestly, community has been thought of as it's a forum, it's an owned place that you have. And I think that's quite frankly wrong. So community is a much broader concept of, we talked about this idea of meeting people where you are, how do you congregate at their water cooler? And that is ultimately, I think, the broader definition of community and how you want to look at that kind of lead growth process. So to use a couple of examples there, there's a million person subreddit dedicated just to like Snowflake versus Databricks. That is an incredible amount of content and people for a topic that even though I'm the host of the MarTech podcast, I don't want to hear about that. You don't want to hear about, but... There's a community of data analysts that care deeply about it. And that's where they're talking through these things. That's where they're understanding how should I think about X versus Y with these products. If you're a technical product that developers are using, you know, people are in GitHub repos talking through things. If you're a CMO listening to this podcast, my guess is that you are a member of some Slack community where with your buddies, you talk about how are you thinking about MROI for the CFO since the CFO has all the power these days, (laughs) right? There's a lot of places where community can happen. So a big part of it and kind of bridging off of this idea of like influencer marketing is also understanding not just these people that are thought leaders or like luminaries, I'll call them, in your space. But also there's these congregating points of, and I mean this with all respect, the average Joe that is talking about these elements. They're in a subreddit. They're in wherever it may be. I think that's the first thing that I'd think about when it comes to community-led growth is this idea of every problem out there has a community. Communities are one of the like, you know, oldest concepts, I would argue, in how societies work and how do you engage in those communities. There's a parallel here to building a platform or a point solution. And often you're struggling with building something and you're just looking for one MarTech tool to move this one bit of data from this system to that system. 
And some of the times you're like, you know what? I need the full kit and caboodle. I need Salesforce or HubSpot. And I want everything that touches sales, marketing, customer success all the way across. When you are thinking about the forums and the communities that people are aggregating in, do you find that most people are in those communities and they're staying and having conversations or are they doing a quick hit when they just have a discrete problem? It honestly varies. I think the common, I guess, like framework that people think about is 90% probably of folks that are going to interact are people call them lurkers. Looky-loos. Yeah, looky-loos, even better. And then you've got about 10% that are actively contributing and are engaged in it frequently. And it kind of gets back to our prior conversation of this idea of like influencer marketing, but then there's different ways to think about that. Those 10%, maybe they're not traditional influencers, but you want to understand that, that they are actively responding to other folks' questions, that they're doing those kinds of things versus understanding that there's also just a space where folks will come in, maybe get a question answered, and you might not see them ever again. Maybe you will see them in three months, but there is a cadence to, if you will, how a community operates and better understanding what archetype, if you want to think of it that way, that someone is in that community is also helpful. All right. So understanding whether somebody is coming in for a quick hit of information or whether they're a regular contributor to a community often dictates probably how you're going to handle them and prioritize and engage with them. Give me some tips here for brands who, all right, I found this community. There's this great Slack community with thousands of technology-driven marketers, and boy, I want them all to listen to the MarTech podcast. I'm assuming the answer is don't just go and start spamming the entire community with every episode we do. How do you figure out an appropriate course of engagement? I'll give an answer. Let me use a customer example, actually. I think that's always helpful. So I just had coffee with their CRO this morning, and they've got their own owned community, so their own Slack and we also have community happening in these public channels and they have their SDRs and AEs really tuned into it. And it's become their primary lead gen source. And the biggest thing that he has to train his incoming team on is how do you approach it with a value added? If you want to think about that framework, we're simply going in and spamming and selling. So an example there, like very tactically, is when someone asks a question in the community, you don't go in and say, hey, come to my website, or here's a link to the MarTech podcast in your example. You start with super interesting question, like here's an answer that is, I'll call it solution agnostic. You have to build trust and you have to build a relationship there. And you've got to think about it as an evolution of value added selling versus simply coming in and pushing your product. Because if you do that, then ultimately uh, you are not a contributing member of the community, if you want to think of it that way. I always have mixed emotions about Reddit forums because I'm not a Reddit user. And every time I see a Reddit or a subreddit that seems relevant, I'm like, why am I not just having somebody on my team take each episode and publish it? And sure, the engagement's not going to be great, but the effort to do that is relatively small. And honestly, it's spam. It sucks. But it's also probably an effective marketing channel, too, on some level. Yeah, you'll get some level of engagement, I'm sure. Yeah. And honestly, I have mixed emotions about what you're saying, which is, hey, I've got a question about how to do community-led growth. And isn't an appropriate response is, sure, we recorded an entire podcast about this. It's 15 minutes long. Here's everything you need to know about community-led growth with a link off. That's not a good response, right? You have to summarize what was said and give away the value without getting the reward. Fair enough. So maybe in your case, it's a good distinction. Like if it's just a podcast, sure, send it out, right? I think about it more as like in the B2B journey. If you jump in and you're like, hey, I'm, I don't know, whatever. I already mentioned Data, Databricks and Snowflake. If you jump in and you're like, Snowflake does this, here's a link. That's a little bit kind of like spammy and you're almost violating how people think about that. But, and again, it's like to the idea of like, how do you build community? How do you build trust in it? Whereas if you come in and you're like, hey, that's a great question. Here's a couple of thoughts on how to approach it. Would love to like jump on a call and help you understand what we could do to help. That goes a lot further in that case. It really comes down to a tone exercise, doesn't it? That's a great way to say it. As you say, I'm like, yeah, that's how I should have answered much more succinctly, right? It's a tone exercise. There's a reason to have a podcast host on these episodes as well. Yeah. What I'm hearing from you is 
you need to approach by confirming and affirming the person's problem is relevant. You need to provide some summary of value to show that you know what you're talking about and you're trying to help. And then you can appropriately ask for some sort of a response that also is value additive, but also might be somewhat self-serving. So, hey, everybody is asking about content-led growth these days. My big tips for that is figure out the tone to engage with your community and also make sure that you're putting your content in the right place, the right cadence. If you want to hear a full episode I recorded on my podcast, there's 15 minutes that talks specifically about the problem you're trying to solve. Here's the link or feel free to reach out to me directly. That's a much better response. Thank you for giving me the structure there than, oh, I did a podcast on this. Here's the link. Or, hey, my company does this. Would love to chat about it. <laughs> kind of type idea. You're a lead. Let's boogie. Yeah. Maybe that's a different way to say it. Is like, listen, the reality is community-led growth implied in that is that, and like we see this across huge public companies that we work with at Common Room, community-led growth implies that it can generate pipeline. It can generate revenue for you. I think the distinction is that tone, as you said, around how do you approach them in a more authentic, organic, value-added way versus saying, hey, I'm going to spin up a community so that I can harvest it for leads. Yes, but that's what most brands are doing, isn't it? Hey, we're going to build this community so everybody aggregates around our water cooler, and then we're going to take it from there. Yeah, I think the idea behind it and like where you see really successful ones is where it becomes something where it is a true community of folks that like care about a certain topic. I'll give you an example. And I get this is hard, but I don't know if you're familiar with DBT Labs data. They have a huge community of folks that are passionate about data and how to move data around as we all have to do now as a marketing professional, right? Their community has become a place where folks come and aggregate to just talk about the general problems that they have, because I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but it's a quote, safe place where you can come get your answers, confer with your peers, et cetera. And you know, you're not going to get hit by a SDR trying to get a meeting set up. That said, with a tool like Common Room, we help them understand when someone's asking certain questions or like using certain keywords, where essentially there's intent and context coming out of that, it might actually be applicable to jump in and push a little bit in that way. But to loop it back to that modern buyer's journey conversation that we had yesterday, it's this idea of like, how are they educating themselves along the way? And when do you understand when, I think you used the phrase in our last conversation that like, it's time for the sales rep to get engaged at the one yard line and punch it into the end zone. <laughs> the sales reps are using another football metaphor, turning into the fullback, not the quarterback. Yeah, fair enough. So I think that's the important part about community is like just thinking about the tone and how you establish that. And then I think the other thing that I just want to reiterate is that I think a lot of folks think that to do community-led growth, you know, spin up your own Discord server or your own Slack channel or put a forum on your website. That's not it. There are these communities that are out there. Twitter, with all of its challenges <laughs> right now, you could argue is still a, that is at some level, it's a community-led growth platform. You follow certain people, you care about certain hashtags, you do all those things. There's a community there that focuses in on anytime someone talks about hashtag MarTech, it's probably relevant to you because you know that that's someone in your community of people that care about the problems that you care about. It's very true. We try to embrace the Twitter community. Actually, we're terrible at Twitter here, but we appreciate them when they do write to us. Last question for you. You mentioned Common Room a couple times, and we didn't really give you a forum to talk a little bit about what you do. Tell me about Common Room. Who's it for? What does it do? And how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. So Common Room is really focused on the idea of this new modern buyer's journey, this digital engagement community, whatever you want to call it, right? And I think that's important that it's always changing. What we help you understand is who are the people, where do they work that are engaging in this community, right? And so that can be everything from these unknown communities that I've mentioned. So who are these people that are talking about us in a subreddit? What do they care about? What are the trending topics? Is there positive sentiment? Is there negative sentiment? All the way down to if you want to spin up your own Slack community, help you manage and automate things around that Slack community with ultimately us giving you this kind of 360 view of who those folks are. 
think of it like a CRM. I'm Jake, I work at Common Room. Here's everything I've said across these different platforms in regards to your brand. I'm Ben, I work at MarTech. Here's everything I've said. So you can take the right action. You can bring those signals into your more traditional sales processes. Make it a QL if it's that time to be the fullback, whatever it may be. You know, I'm looking at your website and realizing that Airtable, Asana, and Notion are all listed as the fastest growing companies that choose to use Common Room. All fierce competitors, and if they're all deciding to use their platform, there must be something there to it. So congratulations on all your success. Your word's not mine. I am saying it, <laughs> and it's an impressive amount of traction. Congratulations on your success. Thanks for coming on and being our guest. Thanks for having me. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Jake Randall, the Chief Operating Officer at Common Room, for joining us. If you'd like to get in touch with Jake, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is the Jake Randall. That's T-H-E-J-A-K-E-R-A-N-D-A-L-L. Or you could visit his company's website, which is commonroom.io. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even sign up to be our next guest speaker on the Martech podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is MartechPod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app, and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.